Hey, what's up? It's Dragon Child. So for today's video, we are repainting some Polaroid film. Now, I don't own a Polaroid camera just because I know they're quite expensive and the film itself isn't cheap either, but my friend gave me some Polaroid film that she wanted me to repaint because it's very unfortunate when you take a picture and it develops over or even underexposed and then you have to throw away the film and that's just money down the drain when they're not developed right. So I thought I would repaint them to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing if you're into the art aesthetic. I'm in the process so you can see I already have three of the Polaroids that I painted in this in this video up on my wall already. And you want any more art videos let me know down below so I can do more and fill up this wall with you guys. <laughs> Maybe this one too. I don't know yet. I just we are building building an art aesthetic kind of room and we'll just get straight into the video. For these Polaroids, you are going to need Polaroid tape that could be washi tape, painter tape, or even just regular tape, paint, and a pen. So for this very first one, you'll definitely need a pen. When you're repainting Polaroids, you're going to want to tape down the edges of your Polaroid, especially as closely as possible to the image of your Polaroid. This will ensure that when you're removing the tape, that you'll have nice clean lines and it fits perfectly with the old photo underneath. I used washi tape on my first Polaroid, but it didn't stick to the surface very well, so I switched over to painter's tape for my second and third Polaroid. Now, if you don't have any Polaroids, but you do want to follow along with my videos, then you can still cut a piece of cardstock or a piece of paper in a similar size of a Polaroid and follow my methods here. It's honestly something I'm going to do when I run out of Polaroids and I don't have anything else to repaint. Now, if you're repainting anything that has some color before it or even old image, it's always best to paint with a white base layer first. So that way, when you paint the new colors, the old image doesn't show through and it'll be more opaque that way. I've also learned when I'm doing a tape masking around the edges that I like to paint inwards away from the tape so I can make sure that the paint doesn't seep through any areas where I didn't press the tape down. I'll paint about two to three coats of white paint with some dry time in between so that way when I paint the new colors on top the old image is not seen. For this Polaroid we're going to be using a light purple and a light pink. The top half is going to be the light purple which will ombre into a light pink. It kind of gives off a soft sunset or even a soft sunrise depending on how you view things. As I'm painting the first coat, I'm doing it rather quickly so that way the paint is still roughly wet so when I transition into the light pink, I can blend the two together by brushing the lighter color over the darker since the purple is a little bit darker than the pink which will give you kind of a nice blended effect. Just like the white base layer, you're going to need two to three coats of each color with equal dry time because if your layers are not fully dry, you will have patchy areas and no matter how many times you fix it, it will always look patchy and will not be perfectly solid or streak free. And what helps with the blending is to kind of go with a quick back and forth motion to minimize your strokes as well as it just helps blend in the transition right in the middle. To paint clouds, I feel like there's a couple different ways to paint them. The method that I chose is kind of simple. I chose a paintbrush with stiffer bristles and with stiffer bristles you're more likely to get some texture when you tap on the Polaroid with the paint, very minimal paint might I add. So when you're tapping on the Polaroid, don't paint or brush. You won't get the same slight fluffy cloudy effect that you would get if you brushed it on. This method doesn't require a lot of paint so you're not mixing in the light pink with white or the light purple with white to get a subtle gradient. If you use less paint and gradually use more paint in areas that you think you need to, you are perfectly fine with these clouds. I somehow seem to have forgotten to film where I was drawing the last bit in pen. 
pen so i was trying to make like electricity poles and the wires so essentially you would have just drawn in the corner like two little crosses one bigger than the other for some perspective and then you would draw two lines that curves a little bit like wire but i also make mistakes so the lines aren't as perfect as i would like to also in my defense i was doing it with one hand i did try and go and fix it again but ultimately i just think my pen wasn't working correctly so it was a little unclean unfortunately the last bit that i did i ended up doing little like paint specks little dots to be like stars so i guess it turned into like a whole sunset night situation but i don't know it's only for aesthetic purposes and here i am giving you some aesthetically pleasing healing polaroid number two is going to be some lavender and it may look intimidating at first but the process is very very simple it'll also look a lot better than the digital art that i just made for this video so just like the first one you're going to tape down the edges of the polaroid and do a white base underneath if you're doing darker colors i didn't mention this earlier but you don't need that white base and you'll paint a light blue coat of paint on top you'll cover the entire thing unlike like the first one because this will be your sky now grass kind of has a lot of lights and shadows definitely lots of shadows to kind of create depth and dimension in grass so if you want to get fancy and use different shades of green be my guest i want to make this simple and easy for everyone to do so when you're creating more like painting grass it's sort of like a flick of a risk a fast-ish motion with a thin paintbrush can kind of give you that little blade look of grass. I don't know how else to explain it, but I feel like if you go slow and trying to make the perfect line for grass, that is not how grass is supposed to look like. <laughs> Plus, going slow when you're creating grass kind of gives you shaky hands, so I feel like a fast motion with a thin brush like I am doing here, it'll give you the right effect. This is going to be a little weird, but instead of using the paintbrush portion of the brush, you're going to use the back end of your paintbrush. I wouldn't understand why you would use a dowel or a chopstick, but if you don't want to use the end of your paintbrush, feel free to use those. You're just not going to be painting with the end of a regular paintbrush because can you manually, mechanically do a perfect circle with a paintbrush and paint? Because I cannot. So we are using the end of a paintbrush to paint dark purple dots on top of each other so they're kind of piling up on each other to create the base of your lavender. So we are doing a little bit of shading here with different colors in a second but as you're painting on your dots make sure to kind of taper the end just a little bit and also vary your sizes of lavender too so that way you kind of create a little bit more depth you get further away lavender or lavender is also a lot closer. Okay bringing back the actual side of the paintbrush we're going to take the light purple and basically tap on the lavender so that way you kind of create some shadow lights and depth with the lavender so it's not so two-dimensional and you don't want to cover the entire lavender with this light purple because then you would lose the effect and it helps that you clean your brush in between so that way there's not excess paint as you're trying to create some light to the lavender. I said I wasn't going to do this but I ended up doing it anyways where I added some more dimension by doing the dark green as shading and in order to do this you kind of need to vary out the dark green grass to create a little bit more dimension even adding them to the lavender as stems will make the lavender look like they're much closer to you but again this is not something you have to do but you can we are back with the clouds and in my opinion i'm not a fan of clean blue skies i feel like when you add clouds it makes it more prominent that these are in fact a sky with some clouds and lavender i don't know it just adds a little extra texture and i feel like boring blue skies can work if you have a noisy foreground 
there's the art element vocab that I was trying to find and I finally found it! Two Polaroids in. <laughs> well, this is the end of Polaroid number two. We are moving on to Polaroid number three. At this point, if you're following along with this video and you're painting along with me, then you must be used to the process of repainting a Polaroid. So exactly like the first two, we are going to paint the Polaroid after we tape down the edges in white, and then we are doing the exact same thing as the second Polaroid and painting the background blue because we are doing some sunflowers, and honestly, I am not the greatest at sunflowers, there's a good chance that I I am going to repaint that Polaroid or at least make my sunflowers better but also again do multiple layers of the light blue because the background can still be seen. Sunflowers have multiple petals and they're all pointed so trying to replicate sunflowers which I could do in drawing I cannot do it in a tiny square. If I did it bigger it probably would look better but also I don't think I have the right color yellow for the sunflowers because they didn't come out as opaque as I would like it to be but anyways painted a yellow circle to kind of describe my center point so that way when I would paint the petals of the sunflower I kind of did like that quick flick motion that I would do for the grass but in shorter strides than longer strides I just realized I meant strokes instead of strides at this point of me doing these voiceovers I'm getting a little tired but I did about three sunflowers I wasn't as a depth and just make it extra on this Polaroid as well but like also I kind of got lazy and I was not liking how it turned out but I wanted to get this done anyways. It just didn't turn out as nice looking as the first two though. After painting the second layer of yellow paint the camera is reading the yellow paint to be much brighter than it actually is in real life but it also might be a creative mistake that I did by adding in the like lighter orange on top of the yellow. I was just trying to add a little bit more depth and value of the sunflower but it ended up looking much more dull than I wanted it to be so thankfully like the center part where you get your sunflower seeds from help cover up my creative mistake but if you do do this do what you will now that I think about it I should have gone over the sunflowers in pen I think it would look much more prominent and honestly more 2d design while I was trying to make everything not 2d designed next you're gonna paint the center part of the flower I don't really know what it's called. I don't know flower anatomy, but you're gonna take your brown paint and basically just do a little circle in the center of the yellow flower petals. I didn't do a completely good job, but also it's very difficult to make a perfect circle with paint. The last step of making these set of flowers is to make the stem and the leaves. So you're gonna take the green paint and basically just draw a line downwards from each sunflower and then when you're doing leaves it's kind of like a teardrop but both ends are pointed and you'll attach that to the stem and that would be it for this last Polaroid. video as i said earlier learn from my mistakes don't draw with one hand while having something in your other hand because in my defense my lines would be cleaner if i wasn't filming a tiktok also it was my first time painting sunflowers and i think it, they would have looked better if i had a white base underneath or a darker yellow so they'd be more opaque but that's my personal opinion if you're a little bit better than me in art and know how to paint sunflowers definitely have a lot more shading and your sunflowers would look a lot more realistic but this video is supposed to be like aesthetically simple easy ways to paint polaroids so what i did they do look like sunflowers my personal favorite is lavenders though lavenders came out really really cute also don't paint your polaroids upside down that was my fault i wasn't paying attention when i taped down my polaroid that they were upside down i also said earlier if you are interested in more art videos, let me know down below. I have a couple more coming up, but they are not room-based where I just paint a bunch of 
pretty pol like Polaroids or just art pieces put up in my room. They are on another level of difficulty, but we will have fun with that. We are in the process of having a cute art aesthetic room. Who is more colorful because she looking a little bare. I start to ramble when I don't know what else to talk about. So I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her.